to dip s just i don't have to dip s just look at any court standard in the country you're thinking of tv so this comment is in reply to a comment that i stated where eyewitness testimony is indeed some of the best evidence that you could have right and then i replied with it's exactly why detectives investigating crimes go out of their way to find eyewitnesses according to him the court standard states that eyewitness testimony is not valuable so anybody who was ever sitting in prison or who's been accused of any crime where there was eyewitness testimony against you in court you better make sure that your conviction gets overturned because according to this guy the court standard states that eyewitness testimony is useless two and a half centuries of court system <laughs> Okay, so this is what uh, I got in my feed, and it's from somebody I'm actually friends with. Brother Maverick is somebody I have actually exchanged numbers and had a chance to chat outside of this TikTok platform where, you know, we have talked directly so brother maverick here's kind of a continuation from where our conversation left off if you go back through our whatsapp history now <laughs> that being said for everybody else watching we all get this right like it's somebody we know or somebody you know we follow who pops up with some reaction to a comment like Brother Maverick is doing here. To be honest, this is something that I personally have not witnessed Brother Maverick do on TikTok like this, you know, where he's taking a comment you know, I'm not saying he's never done it. I'm just saying this is the first time that I've witnessed him addressing someone else's comments. A little backstory. I met Brother Maverick from a comment that was posted on a video I created and posted on my YouTube channel and here on TikTok and even you know mentioned you know charlie kirk and brother maverick here for the first time and i came to read a comment that was posted by brother maverick's identity and the comment was just <laughs> I don't know how to say it like I don't want to call it trivial you know like it was kind of important because I don't know it, it was just something that <laughs> I, I didn't know what I was guilty of right like if we're talking about witnesses and eyewitnesses the comment read like this is the guy who just pretty much ripped off my entire video just to say exactly what I said. You know, Brother Maverick, just, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just kind of <laughs> quickly summarizing this. But, again, I have time invested with Brother Maverick to come together and try to build bridges between these types of conversations especially where there is just so much polarization right it's like it doesn't seem to be any gray area based on face value if i look at this and i see that brother maverick my friend is responding to a comment from joe the Hederick that says i don't have to you, should, you know, just look at any court standard in the country. You're thinking of TV. 
goddamn kiddo. And just based on that, that's like my preface, you know, just when I first saw this, it's just like, okay, here's my buddy, brother Maverick. And here's this comment, you know, like this is, this is how my mind as a computer would process information, you know, tell me if you do the same or you do something completely different because As much as, you know, I stand by Brother Maverick right off the bat, you know, like just looking at him, I'm going to listen to him. And when I hear him just comment on this and explain. But it's exactly why detectives investigating crimes. So this comment is in reply to a comment that I stated where eyewitness testimony is indeed some of the best evidence that you could have, right? Now, where, <laughs> you know, like, so hearing that, I'm just like, okay, so there is a little, you know, if, if this comment right here from Joe Hedrick is the preface, then that bit of information that Brother Maverick just shared about the backstory on why he got this comment, and it just says, because Brother Maverick made a claim saying eyewitness testimony is the most valuable, you know, form of evidence in, you know, court. Like that. And then I replied with, it's a testimony is indeed some of the best evidence that you could have, right? And then I replied with... It already just, you know, like off the bat, I'm just... When I heard that, I was just like... Uh. <laughs> You know, and I look and there's 42 comments and I'm just like, eyewitness testimony is the best, te you know, like, it's just like, yeah, back when we didn't have, uh, you know, smartphones, you know, eyewitness testimony in this technological day and age is, I don't want to say worthless, but it's almost hearsay, right? There's a big difference between an eyewitness testimony versus an eyewitness, like, recording, <laughs> right? Like, I witnessed it, and I recorded it, and here you go, you know, versus, yeah, no, I saw it, and this is, like, how I recall the conversation going, right? That's the big difference Right here, where I would say, okay, maybe Joe the Hederick is, like, saying that. Like, just look at any court standard in the country. You're thinking of TV. I don't quite get where the, you're thinking of TV, like, comes into play with this. That's exactly why detectives investigating crimes go out of their way to find eyewitnesses. Maybe that's the TV part. <laughs> Maybe on CSI or NCIS, like that's the driving plot line. It's always like Ice T or LL Cool J trying <laughs> to track down. You. Did you see anything? Did you? Did you guys hear anything? Did you see anything? I don't think that the detectives, you know, on TV or even in like in real life, go around looking for eyewitnesses to testify. that you know like it, it, how do I want to say this <laughs> it's just I don't understand what this you know like I know Brother Maverick is very Christian you know content oriented so when I, I'm just confused. So this is where I just kind of have to take a break and I'll go back and follow this rabbit hole. Let me ask you very, very straightforwardly then. Okay. So now going back to where the comment came from, it's this video from Atheistic Preacher. And here is like just, a, you know, 1,352 <laughs> comments. But okay. Here is the comment thread three days ago, two days ago, 215 replies on this whole thread. And everybody seems to be going after 
my brother Maverick over here, right? Like, you don't need to be smart to identify fairy tales and folk magic. And then Brother Maverick's response is, Yet the Bible has thousands of archaeological finds verifying those supposed fairy tales. Oh man, too easy. And this is the... <laughs> This is where I'm just like, I, even almost more lost, right? Like, what does, like, eyewitness testimony, you know, like, then I start piecing it together. So if I discover archaeological evidence of New York City, does that mean Spider-Man is real? <laughs> it's like, the using that analogy, no, I would say... No, <laughs> I, I don't know. Right, let me get back to that one. Andrew, absolutely. I saw Spider-Man hanging out with Bigfoot and the Holy Spirit just yesterday. Yeah, well, <laughs> maybe Andrew is serious or maybe he's just being trivial. <laughs> Dude went real quiet, real quick. You know, okay. So then Brother Maverick chimes back in. Was Spider-Man written by 40 different people from three different continents over 1,500 years? Will numerous historical documents from different nations confirm Spider-Man to be a real person? No. Nice try. And this is where... <laughs> Brother Maverick, like... This is the test of... I guess to put it in a biblical scripture, you know, like one John chapter four opens up with, you know, test the spirits because many <laughs> have are just false prophets and just, you know, like you, we all know this, right? But Brother Maverick, no diss on you, but was Spider-Man written by 40 different people? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure there was a giant, you know, like, <laughs> really? Just literally trying to answer this question. I'm just like, uh, probably, yeah, there was probably a bunch of staff writers who were like writing. I mean, Stan Lee, you know, this isn't like a Bob Kane where Bob Kane's just like, I wrote everything for Batman. Nobody else did it. <laughs> yeah, no, this is Stan Lee who is known for like letting his writers and artists just roll with the idea. Like here's a teenage kid from New York, just like any other teenage kid going through all these, you know, physical and, you know, emotional and mental like changes that, you know, we all as human beings older than adolescents, like, can relate to, right? Like, and then, you know, out of a nearly impossible, maybe possible <laughs> chance, he gets these miraculous powers, right? Where he can climb on walls and, you know, some Spider-Man shoot it directly out. And the, you know, that was the, what, Tobey Maguire? Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man, you know, makes his own webbing, like, through his body. While Andrew Garfield's and Tom Holland's Spider-Man don't. They need the cartridges. Miles Morales, I can't quite remember. I believe he has cartridges, too. What I'm saying is... Right here, all these stories, yeah, I'm sure there's probably 40 different people from many different countries. Now, here's the kicker, over 1,500 years? No, not that long, but, I mean, <laughs> Marvel's been around for a long time. Will numerous historical documents from different nations confirm Spider-Man to be a real person? Okay, so now, what is the argument here, right? It all started from the response here, the fairy tales, right? So now you're trapped by your words. 
So now here comes Joe the Hedrick. Do it. I would love to hear your answer. Please tag me in the video. But I know you think you did something. The Spider-Man argument is the weakest argument I've ever heard. You know, like, <laughs> Brother Maverick. Like, a uh, true... believer in Christ Jesus. In my personal opinion, I'll say it, is just <laughs> you you know you think he did something the spider it's just like why, why did you say this, right? This is like a game of chess. Like, you just moved this pawn in front of something. So now here's another comment people can attack you for. Joe the Hedrick says, name three. I don't know what name three is. So do what? I'm sorry. I'm having more than one conversation. So here is your own, like, consciousness, Brother Maverick, telling you, like, yo, like, maybe we need to slow down. You know, I've made countless, you know, videos like this where I've always just, like, shared my pet peeve with, you know, just how, like, our message and comment, like, threads are presented to us on the TikTok platform, right? It's just, it's not in a chronological order or like sorted it's just you got to look at these like joe at brother maverick name three but it's just like oh what you know like <laughs> nope and that was your myth you know like where is this conversation starting and now if we really want to know we have to like go through 208 comments name three what okay here we go oh lol gotcha no written by hundreds of people on all six continents over if we take the full Marvel history, 100 years, your argument is silly, sorry. So here's just no, I guess, telling you exactly what I just said. Like, your word choice in debunking or rebuking the Spider-Man analogy led to this fall. But here's Joe the Hedrick, three archaeological finds that support Jesus is God. I'll wait. And here's the tough one, because, like, what three archaeological finds that supports Jesus is God? That's a dang near impossible, you know, like, what, what the Shroud of Turin, you know, but... It says specifically in 1 John 4, like around 8 through like 16 in chapter 4. Like it just talks about God is love. Love is God. Anybody who knows love knows God. It's like this Rosetta Stone, if you will, of just like, okay, now here is some wording that makes sense, at least to me personally explaining my faith that Jesus is God, right? Why is why do I believe Jesus is God? Because the Bible in 1 John 4 specifically says God is love. And we know this because he sent his, you know, like this is where the wording, but we know this because Jesus loved us first, right? I take that as just, yeah, like in those ancient times, like Jesus's love was like Jackie Robinson coming into, you know, the, the major leagues, uh, baseball and just like 
maybe that's a bad analogy. I'm trying to like stay on point. But three arch archaeological finds. This is a t that that one word, archaeological finds. I mean, so you say, except that Jesus has been verified as a real person by real historians. No historian will ever identify Spider-Man as a real person. How stupid. It's just, again, as a chaplain and a minister of God, as I call myself, you know, like, beware if you're doing evil. <laughs> As in Romans, you know, what, 13? It's just like, I will use that verse as just kind of a identity marker of just like, here's who I am right now, right? Like, if you're doing evil and you're calling yourself Christian and like following, like, I've gotten to a point where it's offensive for me to hear Christians say, act, and just comment. The majority of words I have witnessed. Now, pay attention. I am using these words very intentionally. Not to mention that the Bible authors did not have access to each other's writing and were not aware of each other. Marvel writers are L.A. You know, so now you're just like throwing Marvel writers under the bus. Like, what are you accomplishing, Brother Maverick? Like, you think you're winning this argument, but you're just throwing people like under the bus. It's like, Marvel writers are just uh, L.M.A. You know, like... To, to support Jesus as God? No, he said to s the archaeological, three archaeological <laughs> finds, right? That was the question. Well, we can start with the hundreds of verified eyewitness accounts to the resurrection. And before you try and dismiss, dismiss them, be aware that your opinion of the evidence means nothing. Nope, eyewitnesses accounts are highly unreliable just the archaeological evidence please so here's joe the Hedrick staying on point saying to you brother maverick that's not what i asked you what i witnessed personally in joe the Her heretic correct me if i'm wrong but i see someone who is just trying to lead my brother maverick here to some water right it's like you can make, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. What's wrong with this analogy? Well, A, somebody is a horse and somebody is the one leading the horse, implying that they're like a human being. And then there's the water, right? Who do you think you are in this, Brother Maverick? You know, like, are you leading the horse that you believe maybe Joe the her heretic? Joe the heretic, are you the one trying to lead Brother Maverick the horse to this water? Or what? You know, like, no vague BS who specifically says that a magical spirit demigod with superpowers existed. I don't know. You know, like, this is where just look at this conversation. This is all essentially in the cloud for anyone, especially me, to just come down and see all of this, right? And if I was Jesus and I saw this, I'd just be like, okay, well, here's my list. Let's start making, you know, names in the book of life and who is not. You know, excuse me, but which historians have verified that Jesus was a real person? So now, like, this argument is going all the way over here. And we haven't even watched the video that it spawned from, so let's do that. It says that after the birth of Jesus, the family fled to Egypt. Matthew says that they went to the Jerusalem temple. Are they both correct, or is one of them wrong? Both of those statements are correct, but one of them is wrong because what Alex just said was flip-flop. It's in Matthew that talks about, you know, this. The Jews? Well, I was actually speaking of the... This is your theory. No, no, no. 
I'm saying is that that's one thesis to explain the contradiction between Luke and Matthew. If you want to say that it's trivial, then fine, but we still have to explain how it comes about. And what I'm saying is one idea of how this comes about leads to us undermining our trustworthiness of Luke. What I'm asking you for is your explanation that would not lead to us uh, having to undermine our trust, the trustworthiness I, of Luke. I, 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 don't, I'm not, I don't have the, the ability to referee that. Notice how many times you just said, I'm, 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 you know, like, this is something I've recognized that when we as humans do this thing where we're, it's, it's not a stutter, but it's like this repetition, especially in threes, I'm, 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 I know, no, 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 no. It happens a ton in this. I theorize that this is. visual evidence of just like how the consciousness of the mind is distinguishing itself, right? It's, <laughs> let me work with that theory. The passage, I'm not aware of this contradiction. I'll have to go back and look and sure, see. That, that's fine. Go, and, go and look it up. But let me also okay, so yeah, go and look it up. I mean... <laughs> you're now raising is... It seems to me like what Luke is doing here is attempting to display Jesus as the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy. And in fact, he tells us that that's what he's doing. Therefore, if it is the case that Jesus didn't go to Egypt and didn't come out of Egypt, the kind of unwillingness to try to get... Are they both correct or is one of them wrong? And this is where somebody should have rebuked this video right i mean brother maverick I, when i got to this point and i was just like this is how all of this started right it's this alex o'connor arguing against dinesh disposa you know i don't know who these two gentlemen are and what their relation excuse me what their relationships to you know Christian teacher, you know, like you, Brother Maverick brings up Frank Turek and all this stuff. And I look at Frank Turk as somebody who, yeah, at the birth of Frank Turk and cross examined, like this was a new wave of consciousness, right? This apologetic approach to combat the atheistic secular rhetoric. It's just so simple, guys. Like, Alex, I'm going to stop you there and just say, like Cliff does, you know, like, like, listen to your words. You said in Luke, they it says they fled from Egypt and this was all because of the prophecy, you know, blah, 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 blah. That isn't in Luke. That's specifically a passage in Matthew. In Luke, it talks about how Jesus as a young boy was found in the temple, you know, inside Jerusalem. And his parents were looking for him and they found him. <laughs> like, why did you do this to us? And, you know, Jesus is just like wowing the heck out of all these rabbis and everybody who's listening to him. And he just looks at his parents and he's like, what are you talking about? Like, this is what this is what I'm supposed to be doing, right? Like, it's time. It's time to just... I don't know, like, I'm hoping that this will help spark a direct connection with, you know, all these atheistic preacher, Brother Maverick, especially, uh, Joe the Heretic, maybe even no, but this is something where Let's be 
grown, mature adults. And Brother Maverick and I have the added weight of just a mature follower and believer and representative of Christ. The... <laughs> So, I mean, 